Shall we talk about Everton, Cass? Because it looks as though Frank Lampard is going to be coming in to become the new manager of the club. Um, that after... The sacking of Rafa Benitez. We know that Duncan Ferguson had a, a brief caretaker spell in charge. Just that one game, that defeat to Aston Villa. But as you were saying, you saw a bit of character in that team, mm. a slightly different um, side than maybe we'd seen under Rafa Benitez as well. Before we get your take on the situation, speaking to TalkSport about Everton's situation, the former Premier League striker, Carton Cole, feels there's too many people at Everton trying to make decisions. That's the biggest problem. Everyone wants to be the power man. Everyone wants to have the power to say, this is how I'm running a football club and this is my way or the highway. So what? But so, you, you need to get some a director of football in and you say, listen, no one does anything without this guy say so. And that's it. And then just leave him alone. Leave him to it. Well, as far as I'm aware, Farhad Mashiri is the man that makes all the decisions. Yeah. I think he does have a, let's say a council that he'll talk to people, certain people. He'll get their views, but ultimately he's the one that makes the decision. Frank it Lampard. might it might be mis it might be listening to too many people, but he ultimately yeah. is making all the decisions. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So Frank Lampard, most recently in charge of Chelsea, he's been out of the game for a little while since then. Mm. Is he the right man to lead Everton? Um, he's a lucky man, Frank. Okay, is he? He's a lucky man, and I mean that in a good way, because look, he was an incredible player. Okay, so he's a fantastic player. Um. Gets given the Derby job. Now, obviously, Uncle Harry had a bit of an involvement with Derby and recommended him, rightly so. He's an intelligent guy. Um, they'd come sixth the year before and they were sixth the year he managed them. And yes, they lost in a playoff final against Aston Villa. But they had some very big signings at that football club. They were spending big. You mm -hmm. know, they had Tamori come in, Mason Mount, Harry Wilson, all young lads, all on really big money. Jack Marriott came in as a transfer. Martin Waghorn came in. You know, big... Big money for them at that particular time. So they were spending big on wages. And they come sick. So you could say, part of the course, because they were sick for a year, year before. Okay, they didn't make the, the playoff final, I don't think, with Gary Rowett the year before. No. Um, so he's done okay. And then because of circumstances, you know, who? And probably the question before that is, what manager in the championship coming six would get the Chelsea job? Absolutely nobody. OK, he's been given it because he was a legend at Chelsea and right, Chelsea, rightly so, under difficult circumstances with an embargo and having to nurture a, a team. But when he left that, I think they were ninth in the right. table. Okay. Now, there was lots of going ons in that time. You know, there was a great start, you know, where they, they got going. I, I think he won manager of the month in October in his, his first season at the football club. And uh, but there was lots of wrongs that were happening behind the scene. It was quite clear. Petra Cech had to intervene with problems with players, certain individuals that weren't being spoken to and didn't feel they were being treated right. And that wasn't a good thing when Peter Cech has to, you know, director of football has to come in. And then you had Marina as well, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ab above. There was issues over transfers, over wanting, you know, always wanting Declan Rice, always wanting, you know, I think they wanted the Pierre uh, Emmerich Aubameyang as well at a certain time, really expensive signings that Chelsea didn't want to do. So there was conflict within the Chelsea camp. Now, Chelsea done okay under the embargo, and you have to give Frank praise that the young team he nurtured and Reese James improved a hell of a lot. I thought he was definitely one of the shining lights. hudson Adoy got given a chance and many others. Mm -hmm. There's many others, the boy Gilmore as well. But essentially, you, if you looked at it and said the guy that wasn't the chosen choice for Norwich has got the Everton job. You know, the Everton job is a far bigger job than the Norwich job. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's why I say, if, if I, and this is a pretty, not very nice line to use, but I'll say it because I immediately thought, I thought, of it, thought about it and thought, he's the manager with a silver spoon in his mouth because a lot's happened for Frank because of how good he was as a player. He hasn't earned his stripes, as in what he's achieved, to be Chelsea manager or Everton manager. They were circumstances. And one of them was obviously Chelsea being a legend at the football club. And, and, I, and you know, this is not nothing like sticking pins in Frank. This is just factual stuff. This okay. is what I'm coming from. The, the, so has are, he, are you saying it's a risk with Everton? I think it's... Uh, no, I think he's, he's fortunate. Make the most of it, because I think he's fortunate. But to is get, it a risk for Everton? Um, yes, I do think so. I don't think it uh, initially will be one, but I think over uh, Everton don't have to do a lot to, 
to stay up now. I was talking about that earlier. They can go in a half decent run, they'll stay up because there's teams were are in way worse positions than, than Everton. Um is it a risk in well, he didn't manage money very well. Because when he had the embargo, Chelsea done quite well because he, he had to utilise the younger element of the team. When he was given money, that didn't work out particularly well. A lot of players didn't play nowhere near to the level that the price had they spent. You know, so there was lots of challenges at, at, at Chelsea. Um, so I don't know how Everton are, Everton are financially. If you've taken the last six months, it ain't been very good because they didn't spend hardly anything in the summer and they don't really look like they're going to do anything of any note in this window. So... Unless it's going to be funds are available next summer, there's going to be a lot of change as well within the club, which is some might say, well, it's needed. The good of some faithful might say, well, this needed huge change within the structure of the football club. But it's going to be a massive, you know, there's going to be an exodus of people within the club, for sure, if Frank gets his, what, what normally these managers do, want their own team. And that in itself is quite high, high risk mm-hmm. because they still haven't really sorted out their recruitment system. It doesn't look like it's been good in the last few years. It's actually been terrible. The recruitment's been so poor. I mean, I can remember not so long ago they had Steve Walsh who come from Leicester to come in and yeah. do that, you know, yeah. and they've really lost their way in their recruitment area. So I think there's huge challenges for Frank, but he's very, very fortunate to have the, a job of the structure of Everton. Well, whatever happens, whenever he is appointed, and TalkSport do understand he is... It's imminent that he is going to be appointed the Everton manager. Yes. Um, he's not going to have long, if it, if at all, to spend any money in this January transfer window. So he's not going to make much of an imprint on the squad in terms of changes. Some argue Could, that... Go on. I was just going to say to you, Nat, it's one thing, only because I've experienced this on a personal level, he can be quite precious. You don't need to be like that. You can't be like that as a manager. You can't dis- you can't discard players anymore. And he might say, "Well, I didn't do that." He clearly did at Chelsea. It, he clearly did. Players, there were certain players. Yeah, there wasn't a relationship there. Well, you look at someone like Fakaya Tamori. He started off yeah, playing yeah. for him at Chelsea. Rudiger then, was the big one. Christiansen yes, was another one. Absolutely. You know, there, so there was a number of issues around certain players, and players will turn on you and and do things that are not very nice. But as a manager, you have to. Work that out. You have to work a way of getting the best out of them. And when you don't need them and you can move them on, you do it. And I think that's what he got wrong. He he fell out with certain players, which was clear, that ended up being an issue that someone like Petr Cech had to get involved in to, to, to be the mediator, if you like. Kick off with Hugh Woosencroft. Tuesday to Thursday night, 7 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.